Let me say this evening, I'm very excited because of what the Lord has been doing in my life. And I know he has been doing great things also in your lives. And I want to praise him so much. And tonight, I wanted to, to talk something about a subject a senior pastor began on Sunday, about the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell us that when Jesus Christ was here on earth, and he was with his disciples, just his presence provided for his disciples. All the time, his disciples were provided for. Because he was the master, and he was with them. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And you can imagine that crowd of 12 men, the 12 disciples. And the Lord, there, was, there is not a record of a single time where these people lacked. There is not a record of a single moment where they were sick. There is not a record of any time they were in distress. Every time the Lord provided for them. And yes, and when Jesus Christ was, uh, when time for Jesus, uh, it was time for Jesus to leave, he had promised them that he will not leave them as orphans, but he will send a helper that would be in their lives and be with them. Praise be to the name of the Lord. So you can imagine this Holy Spirit of God, whom Jesus talked about, that he will be in you, and he will inside of you, and he will be with you. He will lead you. He will be your guide. When he said that he will not leave, us, he will not leave them as orphans. You know, an orphan is somebody who is helpless. A child who is not able to fend for himself. And Jesus said he will not leave them as orphans. He will, give, he will give to them another helper. Somebody like him who will be with them, to lead them, to guide them, to direct and to order their steps. And to make them effective in the ministry. Praise be to the name of the Lord. In, verses, in John 14 verses 26, he says, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. The Holy Spirit of God will be in them to lead them. You know, he said, the Holy Spirit will be is our guide. And you know the guide is always ahead of you to lead you, to show you the way so that you do not fall into the ditch or so that you do not make losses. The Holy Spirit is ever leading us in the ways that are just marvelous, in ways that we cannot just understand. And we learned that the Holy Spirit is a person. And the Holy Spirit, as a person, has a will. A will is, will is a will that is somebody who can make choices. He can choose. He has intellect. That is, he, he designs. And he has emotions. Emotions, he can be grieved. We can, we can grieve him or we can make him happy. So tonight, as we continue in, in the theme of the year, in his presence, we want to continue. In the, as Jesus Christ left, he sent the Holy Spirit to be in his place. And he will be in, the Holy Spirit takes the place of Christ here on earth in our lives. And he will, he will lead us. He says that he will remind us. He will teach us and remind us of all things. So 
So the Holy Spirit has many things to do. Or we need to depend upon the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can be effective. Because if Jesus Christ in his day here on earth did the many things, the miracles, the healing and everything, now the Holy Spirit is here with us in our lives. We will, and Jesus Christ said that we will do even greater things than he did because the Holy Spirit is with us. So I want to tell us this evening that we need to cultivate a very close relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you are to be effective in your ministry, if you are to be effective in your Christian work, if you are to be effective in your family, in everything that you do, we need to cultivate a very effective and a very cordial relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to the name of the Lord. We need him so much. And if the Holy Spirit is of such significance in our lives, how should we treat him? How are you to treat the Holy Spirit in your life? If our lives so depended, depends on him, how are we to treat him? The Bible says, you know, if you have a friend, you know you could as well ignore him. And the Bible, the word of God in, in 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Know that the person of the Holy Spirit, of the Spirit is in you all the time. The time you said yes to Jesus Christ, he came into your life. And he is in you. And he wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to make you effective in the ministry, in your family, in, in your profession, in everything that you do. The person of the Holy Spirit wants to manifest himself and show, you as, and show himself strong on your behalf. Praise be to the name of the Lord. So if the Holy Spirit of God is in you, you know there is a chance that we, you might not even be aware that he's in you. And you ignore him. Or, he, or, we, or we, have, we treat him just anyhow. And then he will be of no effect. He will be of, he will be of no any effect. Any his power will not work in us. Because we are ignoring him. So we need to really be aware that he is in us. And the word of God says, you know we grieve him by our words. When we continue in obscene language, in, in, we continue to malign others, to speak ill of other people, or to hold a grudge, to be a person who mamas in, you know we grieve the Holy Spirit. And it will be of no effect. It, is, it will be like he's bound in our lives. He wants to move. He wants to help you. But he cannot move because you have grieved him. Praise be to the name of the Lord. If we continue in things like pride or grudge, unforgiveness, and even to the extremities of sexual immorality, impurity, Lust, evil desires, greed, which the Bible says is idolatry. We grieve the person of the Holy Spirit. And you know the person of the Holy Spirit enables us to do so many things. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we evangelize. People come to the knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus because of the, of the person of the Holy Spirit of God. 
You know, the, the word of God says, he convicts men of sin and of judgment. When you minister to, when you preach to somebody to come to the Lord, and you tell him that the Lord loves you, and he wants to change your life for the better, and he has good plans for your life, the Spirit is working behind the scenes, and you will find this man or this lady yielding and saying that I will surrender my life to Jesus. It is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And we have said also that the work of the Holy Spirit is he is a teacher. And he brings revelation. Every time we read the word of God, you know we may not understand. But the Holy Spirit of God is the, is the revelator. He is the one that bring, that breathes life to the written word and makes that word alive in our hearts, in our spirits, so that it may be of effect in our lives. Praise be to the name of the Lord. He, he, is, he, brings, he teaches us and he brings revelation to the word of God. I want to tell us the word, that the Holy Spirit of God imparts love. I know you are in company or you are working in a place or you are in a family and there are people for sure they are not easy to love. They might not be too easy to love. But the Holy Spirit will give us the grace to love. The Spirit of God will pour out his power upon you and upon my life so that we can embrace even those that are not lovable. We can reach out to them. It is the love of the Spirit of God. It is him that enables us to go that far. Because without him and on our own strength, we cannot make it. Hallelujah. We cannot make it. The word of God says that the Holy Spirit is our helper. You know we are weak. But because we have the person of the Holy Spirit, we have the strength. We overcome challenges. We overcome difficulties. Because the power of the Spirit of God, he is alive in us. He is alive in you. The word of God in Isaiah 59 and verse 19 says, When the enemy comes in as a flood, the spirit lifts up a standard. You know, you could be going through challenges and difficulties, but you are still here. Why? The spirit of God has lifted up a standard against the enemy so that you are not destroyed. It is because of the Lord that we are not destroyed. The Lord has lifted up a standard against the works and the schemes of the devil. You would have given up a long time ago and gone. But because of the spirit of the living God, you are here. You are still pressing on. You are, you are going strong because the helper is with you. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And he helps us to do the will of the Father. The Holy Spirit. He makes us like Jesus Christ. Long time ago, you could be a man or a woman, probably who, who easily revenge. You could easily not give in. You could not, not easily let anything pass and challenge. Anything that comes your way, you could challenge. But as you grow in the faith and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God that is at work in you and in me, you just let some things pass by. They are no longer worth struggling for. They are not worth fighting for. You just let them pass. Not because you are weak. Not because you cannot fight. But because the person of the Spirit of, of, of the Holy Spirit is in you. And he wants to make you more like Christ. As humble as Christ. Wanting you to make peace with all men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So, my brethren, even tonight, there are so many things that by the power of the Spirit of God, we can be able to do. It is not our human strength. It is not our wisdom. It is by the power of the Spirit of God. Like the worship that we had this evening, it was energized and it was powerful. Why? Because the Spirit of God was at work in every one of them that was here in your lives to lift up Jesus. So the Holy Spirit of God energizes us in our worship to bring down heaven. And every need, every struggle melts away because when we lift him, he will draw men to himself. He will free us of our struggles. He will glorify you as his, himself in our lives. The power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to ask you to welcome to continue in your life knowing the person of the Spirit is in you and he wants you to be aware of him. Be obedient to him. The password here is surrender. We need just to surrender. If you will surrender to the person of the Holy Spirit of God in your life, I want to tell you everything because you surrender, he will work in your life. It is him that, who will be working because you have surrendered. You've said, Lord, I am not able. This circumstance, these situations, I am not able. And the, and the Holy Spirit kicks in. And he will give you the strength. He will renew you. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Because the Spirit of God is renewing their strength, giving them grace to soar up every day in their lives, in all that they do. You know, there are signs of things that, that we have actually relegated the spirit to the side. When we begin to observe some of these signs in, in our lives, we know we have relegated the person of the Holy Spirit to the rear in our lives. When there is upheavals and chaos in our lives, my brother, my sister, know that the, the Spirit of God, you could be struggling, and then the Spirit of God has just let you to do what you want to do. When there is worrying, so much worry in your life, when we worry so much, you know the Bible says, do not worry. When we worry, we know we are not giving chance to the Spirit of God to work in our lives. Let us not worry. So these are the red flags in our lives. In chaos and worries and fear, impatience and sadness. When, you know, at times, for no reason, you feel very heavy in your heart. I want us to check on our hearts. Let us check on our walk with, Christ, with the Lord. You know, the enemy would have, would have probably whispered a word of discouragement. A word of, that is out to frustrate you. Things don't seem to work. I want to tell us, let us give a chance to the Spirit of God to walk in you, to walk in my life, to produce what Galatians 5.22 says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, 
It is joy. It is peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So tonight, I want us to give chance to the Spirit of God to work in us. Examine your life. Let me examine my life also. And check on the areas where there, is, there are such red flags of the absence that speak of the absence or, or actually where the Spirit of God has been made of no effect in our lives. We want to walk a life that is effective. When there is, you have an issue or you have somebody who is sick in your family. You have, you are, you have, you are in your place of work. You are being harassed. You are being, you have a struggle. I want to tell you this evening. I want you to welcome the person of the Holy Spirit into your life, into your family into your work space, into your business. Surrender to him because surrender is the password. When, we, when he is with us, we will not struggle because he will show us the way. He will, the resources will come because of the person of the Spirit of God that is at work in our lives. He will lead us and he will guide us. So this evening, I want us to take time and pray for the situations that you are going through. Just, I want you to take time and reflect on your life and see, are you a man of patience? Or you are a man who is impatient. Because impatience is a sign that you are not trusting in God. And you, re you relegate the person of the Holy Spirit to the, re to, to, uh, to the rear, where he is of no effect. Are you a person who is sad. Has the enemy thrown in something, poison into, into your heart to make you sad, discouraged, and frustrated, and disappointed? You are oppressed in many ways. I want you to take time and just surrender to the Lord. Say, Lord, I am no longer able. I cannot continue in this way. I want to surrender to the person of the Holy Spirit, to lead me, to guide me, to take away the sadness, to take away every worry in my life. For even the Bible says, even w when you worry, what will you change? There is nothing. You will not change a thing by worrying. Just surrender to, this, to the Spirit of God, to take care of your situation, to take care of your family. You know, we can indeed at times worry because we have no food. We have no school fees for our children. We don't know where the next, our rent will come from. You, you are saying, even the ministry that you are in, you are wondering. Surely, this work of the ministry is like a burden. But the power of sp the Spirit of God wants to come every storm in your life. He wants, you, yours, he wants you to be effective in that ministry. He wants to give you strength and impetus to move on because it is him that knows the way. He knows where you are hurting. He knows every challenge that you are going through. He knows every difficulty. 
He knows your tomorrow. So I want us to rise up this evening. And if you are having a challenge, you are, have, you are facing a difficulty in your life that you, sh you are saying, I do not know how to go about it. The power of the Spirit of God knows how to go about it. He has, he has the wisdom to intervene for you, to come through for you. So I want to tell you, don't give up that ministry work. It is the Lord that called 